Good morning, folks. Hopefully you saw the special video last night. We will follow that up with more catastrophism today on the website tonight, and we're throwing a climate punch too. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on the sun were very quiet. Minor motions continue. We had no more significant solar flares, and all the small releases are heading away from Earth. The solar wind has dropped back today, elevated intensity fading back in the plasma stream. And you can see the geomagnetic conditions did reverberate at those low levels after the news for a few hours and are re-entering calmer conditions this morning. Now, let's go to a space mystery. They have discovered a mysterious polarized radio signature from near the galactic center, and they have absolutely no idea what it could be. It's showing up with the weirdest frequency in the pattern, and there is utterly no visual counterpart. Its signature doesn't match any known type of star or even a theoretical object they could concoct right now. The options are everything from a new energetic paradigm event at the galactic level to aliens trying to say hello. Up next, we're at NOVA events. New Chandra Look is investigating older accumulation deflagration boom stars and finding a remnant spectroscopy in combination with other scopes that is able to isolate the radio signatures of the accelerated electrons, the infrared of the dust produced by the NOVA, and the other plasma around it still excited to be shining in X-rays. They were able to pull hard bands to do a deeper dive on both the silicon content and the iron content. Gorgeous. The macro version of the Micronova events and my only hint at tonight's website deeper look episode is look at the distributions in the younger supernova we know. Think magnetic dusty pinballs. And we are back at the AGU conference abstracts. Gonna take some doing to not violate YouTube's new climate rules on this one. First, we're seeing an excellent bit of wording on how explosive the space energy can be integrated into the Earth system, and not just the ionosphere, but the atmosphere as well, as opposed to the slow trickle-down solar forcing in the models. This paper we saw yesterday as part of the ozone destruction story, but the latitudinal extent tells us the reach of those explosive injections that we saw in the last paper, and the icing on the cake. YouTube rules. Can't call climate change a hoax, can't say we're not warming, can't say humans don't contribute. All of those are true, but to what extent? How much are humans contributing versus Earth's weakening magnetic field, letting in more space energy? Here, they're finding a phenomenally embarrassing omission in the climate models. The higher energy burst can outperform the energy deposition of the lower energy electrons, and what's more than they're often missing over half the space energy forcing, is that these penetrate down to the D region of the ionosphere, rather than just the upper E region. Climate science is no scam. We're warmer than we were in 1850, and humans contribute to climate change. A bit. The rest is the sun and geomagnetic secular variation. We greatly appreciate your support. If you didn't catch last night's catastrophe video, most have been shocked at everything that's happened in the last 75 days. Website members, I'll get that special deeper look out for you later this afternoon. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.